Hi everybody, I'm here to walk you through a conversion that I made on this um, Duramax XP 1200EH generator from being a dual fuel generator to being tri-fuel. So I'm going to walk you through what I did with this. So for starters, what I did is I actually removed the propane regulator. So the propane regulator normally would have been right under here and there would have, been, would have been a hose from the carburetor up top up here, where that red hose is now. Zoom it out a little bit there, all the way down to this propane regulator. Um, instead, I bought this regulator um, off of eBay. It was roughly $100. It came with the red tubing that you see there, gas tubing. And then that red line goes directly to the carburetor back here, which is where the original propane line connected to. In order to do that, I did need to take off um, this air filter and holder um, in order to get access back there and really tighten things down properly. Um, I mounted this regulator here using two uh, bolts. I drilled holes through the frame here and here. Um, I positioned it in such a way that hopefully the lines should be out of the way when everything's disconnected that it's still portable enough to wheel around. Um, this regulator here is good for both low pressure propane and low pressure natural gas. So you can see I put a splitter in. So everything from here to the hoses, okay, um, was bought at Lowe's. Um, so I basically bought this elbow, a splitter, two valves, all of the couplings to connect it to, to it. Everything from here outwards, this came from uh, eBay from Nash Fuel, um, who provided this 20-foot hose for me. And then this hose is the propane hose that came with uh, the generator itself. So there's the end of it with the low pre with the high pressure regulator and then the low pressure regulator. All right, so everything from here to the carburetor was from Nash Fuel. From the fuel line here from this valve all the way to the house was Nash Fuel and then everything kind of in between teeing it off was purchased from uh, Lowe's in order to make all these connections. Um, from this point this 20 foot gas line runs over to a natural gas line that I have connected to the house here. Um, in the long run there will be a quick connect that you see here. This quick connect um, will be attached to the house uh, over here so that I can attach this hose with the quick connect instead of having to uh, unthread it every single time. So once I have the final nipple that will be attached, but I did miscalculate and came up short on that. Um, behind on the other side of this wall is the garage and in the garage is a shutoff valve uh, that shutoff valve is right now in the on position, and so I'll just demonstrate. So everything is it's uh, on here, off here. All right, so that will allow the gas from the natural gas side to flow in. If I wanted to run propane, I would just close this side, open this side, but I don't foresee that um, now that natural gas is connected. Um, one note is that with the choke, if I ran the choke fully open, um, which would be completely to the right here, if I ran the choke completely open, the engine kind of like had a um, shuddering, not shuddering, but it would, it would go high, low, high, low. So it would kind of throttle up and down a lot. Um, by lowering the choke or closing it a little bit and making the mixture run more rich by cutting off some of the air, it smoothed out that behavior. I'll actually show that to you when I start it up um, of how that behaved. Once this is all connected, our oh, last thing to keep in mind is that because this is a long gas line, I had to prime the line to get any air out of it. So there's a button here on the back of the regulator. You push that button um, and then I kind of pushed it until I smelled that natural gas smell. Um, I'm outdoors, so I wasn't too concerned about that. And I waited a little bit for it to dissipate before I started the generator. So finally, the moment we've all been waiting for um, is keys in. So the 
generator is running. So that's it. <clears throat> um, that conversion took, um, you know, all in all, probably two or three hours worth of labor to attach all these fittings, uh, take things off, put them on, had to redo things a few times. Um, I also broke in the engine by running it on propane for an hour, doing an oil change, running it for pro on propane again for another hour, uh, and then changing the oil again. So it's had two oil changes just to kind of get any debris that might have been in the engine out. Um, but it has also been run on propane, so I know that that portion works as well. So that's it for roughly $1,200 for a generator. For, let's see, the hose was roughly $210. The regulator was $100. Uh, the fittings from Lowe's were roughly about $50. Um, so for all of those parts, um, I got myself a tri-fuel generator and everything that I looked at online for something of this size in tri-fuel was well into the, the three, four, five thousand dollar range. So definitely saved a whole bunch of money by making this conversion myself.